welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about new player stuff. Uh, about LOTR, the Lord of the Rings card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm your other host, Ted Bannock. And I love, I love New Player February. We're going to... Pretty close wrapping this sucker up. We've uh, covered quite a few phases so far, and this is going to be the final episode about phases because we're talking about phase seven today. Woohoo! Phase seven. Which we're gonna we're gonna refresh this. It's refreshing here to get. It's going to be very refreshing to finish the final phase right. uh, episode of the game. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Ted. And so we normally have a format where we spend uh, one episode talking about a player card in depth. It's a deep dive into into a player card per episode. Um, but in February, it's our extravaganza month, and we kind of put the uh, format on hold to talk about all sorts of stuff. And this February, we are addressing the revised core set that came out, and we're trying to address specifically new players to the game. This game can be a little intimidating to some people, and there's a, usually a ton of questions surrounding it. And in the Facebook group, you know, today is... January 23rd, there's already people posting about new player stuff even before it was released in the United States. So, you know, as one of the uh, one of the resources in the community, we thought it would be only right to release some stuff to help new players along. But that's not to say that veterans like Ted or myself are, you know, not able to or will be able to get something out of this. I think that this is something that is good for everybody involved in the game uh, to just keep in mind. Um, very quickly, we normally run down through our list of patrons, but this month we are also going to do something different by asking you specifically out there to just support us. And a couple of ways you could do that is you could follow us on our YouTube channel by subscribing and hitting the notification button. Um, you can comment on the show, ask questions. I'm usually over there uh, interacting with all the people that are asking questions specifically of the show. If you are more of the podcast listener, we have an audio side. If you could uh, subscribe, rate, review us on your podcatcher, uh, that would be great because that pushes the al algorithm, right, Ted? <laughs> gotta feed it gotta feed nom it nom nom. <laughs> and so we also have a blog um, matt does a great job over at the blog doing deep dives on cards uh, that kind of follows along with the weekly release of card talk so if you're interested in doing that that's over at cardtalk2018.com and you could subscribe to us there but lastly um, the best thing that you can do as a person in the game is to consider supporting us on Patreon uh, for a couple bucks a month. You know, you know, you can help us cover the costs of hosting the podcast and hosting the blog and, you know, getting prizes for giveaways and, and contests that we do and um, also helps um, give out swag to all the patrons of the show. Um, there is big swag at the $5 level and up for people who are patrons between April and the beginning of October, but every person gets a little bit of swag just as a thank you from us. So if you could do that, um, for us, that would be amazing. And we would appreciate that. And Teddy would be ready to talk about, um, anything that you throw his way. <laughs> probably not even be right. angry about it right <laughs> i will not even be upset about it in the slightest ted take us in what are we doing today we're going to be wrapping up uh the series we've been doing at least as far as the the phases go here we're going to be talking about phase seven of the turns we've talked about all the way from planning through a series of videos through uh engagement and then combat and now that's it we've reached the very end you've completed combat and now it's time to get refreshed take a break <laughs> and one good one deserves another so that's gonna kind of be the theme here yep. <laughs> so we're gonna be going into the refresh phase so we're gonna start by talking about that 
and then we're going to briefly cover a few other keywords uh, that are in the game that we didn't really discuss. So I wanted to make mention of those and mention a few other common mistakes that we brought in a f uh, brought up in a few of our other videos, but just kind of collect them together here for you. Yeah. So starting with the refresh phrase. Yeah, and maybe. the refresh phrase thematically, I guess, is like Ted said, is like this is where you get to take a breath. You know, you get ready for the next phase and or for the next turn, and you just, you know, your heroes have done all of these crazy things for a specified amount of time. You know, mentally, sometimes I think of it as day by day. Sometimes it's hour by hour. Sometimes it's minute by minute, depending on on the scenario and the quest. Um, but this is this is that deep breath to kind of do it all again for the next turn, and so you know, get to be able to. You know, basically just, you know, breathe a sigh of relief here for, for having a, a phase in the game that's doesn't have a lot to it, but I think is super important. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just uh, kind of go through and, um, and cover those for you here. So the first thing that happens, if I can quickly get back to my page. I have memorized, but I kind of want to make sure I... I uh, so the I first thing that happens, Ted, I think, is that you have to ready all your characters or everything that happens to be exhausted because there are some... Not even slightly. Attachments. No. What's that? No. <laughs> no that's... that's uh, I think it's the... Man, I just... Hold on. I just lost it. Here it is. I'm right. I'm looking at the rule book right there. Oh, okay. All right, Refresh so phase. The first thing that you do is you ready everybody in all the attachments that may have, like Steward of Gondor, you have to exhaust to use. So you would ready everything at that point in the game. And so um, you don't remove any damage tokens or any um, resource tokens. You don't do anything um, unless a card, unless card text tells you to do it. Um, but you definitely ready all the allies, heroes, and attachments that can be that are ready. So everybody should go from ninety degrees um, turned to vertical, so that you can read them correctly without That's going like it. this. <laughs> You're all right, Dave. I thought for some reason the next thing that happens happens first, but nope. You're you're right. It's it's you refresh all cards. I know. Control. I I do I do have a <laughs> reputation in the community for um you know joking around about my knowledge of the game and you know like I don't know everything in and out, but I I am pretty good about you know my game knowledge. So plus I have a rule book and there's no there's no harm in always having a rule book handy for anybody out there because this is an example ted ted was just giving the example you know he he knew that you ready people he was just you know even the veteran players like ted can screw up the rules every once in a while and so you know you want to make sure you get them right yeah yeah i wanted to make sure we got the order in particular because a lot of players tend to take these steps simultaneously because none of them can be interrupted. So the the things that we're describing right now that happen in the refresh phase, there's no actions you take during them. They just sort of happen, and they. We want to. I just want to present them. Present them in the order from the rule book, even though they all kind of happen. Uh, and I think it's at the a, same time without much consequence. As you become a, yep. your new player. I think it's important to do the things in order based on the rule book and then find out what you can, you know, take shortcuts on later on. Right. It's kind of like exactly how you learn learning math. long division first. Exactly. There it is. Right. You do the math, you know, you do it out the long way and then you realize what the shortcuts are that way. You know, you understand everything a little bit better. So what's after readying? Every and readying isn't rocket science. Right. Um, yeah. But I will tell you that, no. you know, if you have Gandalf in play for the turn, uh, you know, then Gandalf stays out and will ready and is still in the game at this point in the game. I don't know why you yes. would need a ready Gandalf during the refresh phase. There are some effects yeah, later on get... in the game that, that, that can impact that. But right now in the core set... You know, it's just nice to know that he stays out for the refresh phase, and that's good. Yeah, yep. So you ready all, all cards you control, all attachments, all allies, all heroes. Uh, the second step is that each player raises their threat by one. 
This is just a mechanical thing. You can't prevent it. Your threat marker goes up by one. Uh, if it does hit that 50 mark, you are, if it goes from 49 to 50, you're eliminated uh, from the game. But if it's not at 50, you're good to, to keep on going. That's just a passive thing that happens. Sauron is on yep. to you even a little bit more here. And so your game goes up. You will thread out at 50, like Ted said. So it's important to keep in mind. There's probably also a refresh action window in here. Dispersed, dispersed it's, com around. it's coming up. Oh, it is coming <laughs> so up. Oh, these, I missed it yep, by these one, three didn't things, I? <laughs> yeah, these three things happen. You ready? You uh, raise your threat, and then you also pass the first player marker. It goes to the player to your left uh, and again we mentioned too if you are playing solo by yourself there's nowhere to pass it you're just always continually the first player otherwise the first player marker um, shifts after you've done those three things there is a window for player actions um, i don't believe in the core set there are any refresh actions but if you wanted to take an action right now you could, but what will what will happen after this action window is that the round, like the phase will end, and then after the end of the refresh phase, the round will end. And that's going to start the whole turn cycle over again. And you will be starting at phase one, uh, which is planning. And you will be getting resources and drawing cards, but that is doesn't happen now. That happens like the refresh phase, these three effects happen, action window, end of round. Right. And so and then you're ready to start the next one. Right. Right, right, right. I was going to I was going to suggest that you know there are like you said there are some refresh actions but none that I can think of in the core set that actually happen unless they are on some of the boons and burden cards that are that are out there. So Yeah. Yeah, there's not this is... um with the cards players have available to them in the in the course set, there's not going to be honestly even with the expanded card pool to, to kind of preview a little bit. There's there's some things you can do here, but it's not all that expansive. But right. as you do get more cards, you do get some more options, which is very cool to take advantage of this time in the game. But it's nothing incredibly vast. Yeah, uh, and and anything you can play now. I was going to mention any card you could play now, like you'll be able to, there's a new action window coming up, you know, in the resource phase and in the planning phase. So right. players tend, tend to wait from a strategic standpoint. Yeah. And what I was going to say is that because this is kind of the, this is the actual end of the turn, anything that happens at the end of the turn, like Gandalf leaving play, this is when you would do this. So this is kind of when, you know, um, this is when players kind of take, uh, like, clean up their board, I guess, is really what's going on. Now that everybody's mm -hmm. ready, you know, anything that had a had an effect just for the turn, that gets discarded, like Gandalf, or, you know, there's, um, there's, some, uh, there's some other effects that happen for the end of the turn, so those things get wiped away, whether they're part of, you know, treacheries or events that you've played, um, so... You know, and yeah. so this um, is kind of oh. like the the mental, like yeah. Kind of like, there there are some cards that trigger now, um, specifically in the third quest from the core set, Escape from Dual Gul'dor, uh, the Dungeon Torch, which is an objective in that game. Uh, that there's an objective that you attach to a hero, and it has a forced effect at the end of each round. Raised attached heroes controllers threat by two. So then you do your one threat race for the refresh phase, and then if you control the dungeon torch, it's an additional two. Same goes for the shadow key. The uh, shadow key is another uh, item that's an objective from that quest, and that has a force effect at the end of each round. Attached hero suffers a damage. So these are the times when those things would trigger. Right, and um... I knew there was something. Oh, there's <laughs> like there's the... other end of the round effects. Um. And then there's also the Gladden Fields. So the Gladden Fields, during the refresh phase, you have to raise your threat by an additional point. That's it. Yeah. Right. And so so there are th things. And again, it's it's not obvious on the Gladden Fields that you have to do that during the refresh phase unless you read the card. So just double check here at the refresh phase. 
you know, read the cards again just to make sure that you have, you know, all the triggers and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of card so reading. Of and that's... Keep track. Uh, yeah, and hopefully that's fun for you, and that's why you continue to, to enjoy the game. But you got to check multiple places, right? You got to check your attachments. Uh, you mostly have to check encounter cards. There's not too many player cards that have these end round effects, but there's a few because you have Gandalf. You have ally mm. Gandalf. So you have to watch locations, watch enemies, watch the quest scenario. And it's a good place to make a note like, okay, end of round, I need to check for things that happen at this time in the game. Because a lot of effects happen either at like the beginning of a phase or at the end of the round. It's very common for those mm -hmm. things to happen. Or at the end, beginning of a phase, end of a phase, end of the round. Right. You're going to see those throughout the course of the game. Yep. And I think that this brings up, is a good transition between talking about the phases and some of the common mistakes and other keywords is that, you know, without any sense of, or sort of, you know, um, you know, condescension, I think reading the cards is, you know, the, probably the best thing that you can do, especially early on when you're just learning the games is take time to, you know, read the cards, take time to read the, read the flavor text to get into the theme of the game so that you can, you know, cause you can really get yourself into the game really well by reading flavor text and things like that. And then, you know, read the cards so you don't miss those triggers. And that's, you know, and there's a lot of those triggers that you may miss. And I know as veterans, you know, Ted and I are guilty of missing triggers or misunderstanding when a trigger happens. And, you know, it's just part of the game. So, you know, do the best you can to read the cards. And so as we move along from reading the cards, <laughs> Ted, what are, what are some of the common mistakes that we should review here at the end of this? Yeah, so we mentioned a few of them throughout this uh, this video series, but um, we're just gonna sort of mention mention those again and mention uh, one or two new ones here. So, uh, first of all, nothing, no, no f one single phase is optional. So you have to quest. <laughs> you have to, whether you choose to commit characters or not. Is, a, is optional, whether you exhaust them to, to quest them, but you cannot skip the quest phase, you cannot skip revealing cards, you cannot skip the calculation of being successful or not and having to raise your threat or make progress. You can't skip combat. Um, so you have to do each phase. So it's good to have the, the rule book out um, to look at those phases and and uh, be able to, to walk through them. Yeah, and as we so, move along, um, through this, you know, no phase is optional, but you know, you have to be careful about what's considered the staging area and what's considered not the staging area for questing, right? So when you're questing, you're only trying to quest, what I say is quest over the cards in the staging area. So any cards that were in the staging area, plus any cards that get revealed during the staging step. And so, you know, that's not the active location, because again, the active location gets removed from the staging area, and that's not including anybody that's engaged with you. The active location stays active until you get quest po uh, enough progress on it equal to its quest points, and enemies stay engaged with you until you either kill it or until a quest until an effect puts it back into the staging area. Things stay put until some effect moves it around. Does that, does yep. that make sense? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, okay. I think so. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone else uh, as well. Um, so, uh, so as you mentioned, yeah, the active location, not in the staging area, enemies also that you're, you're fighting are not a part of the staging area. So make sure to, like, those are separate do not count those right uh the other thing we'll mention too is a little bit about about combat it's a it's a very common mistake uh when you're first playing the game to think that when you are doing combat when you're 
uh, attacking or, and defending that it happens simultaneously in a lot of different card games. It's kind of how it goes. It's like an exchange of blows. Or we're just going to reiterate it. It's, it's not. Defending is one action. You ex an enemy attacks you. You exhaust a character to look at their defense value and resolve its attack. They may or may not take damage based on their defense. That's it. That's as far as that goes. If you want to do damage back to an enemy, you have to declare one or more attackers between your allies and heroes to attack that character back. Right. And the other thing is that the only time you ever reshuffle the encounter deck, so thinking about attacks and you're dealing out shadow cards, we made a point of this, but the only time you reshuffle the encounter deck is when it's empty during the staging step, during the quest phase. So as you are revealing cards. So Ted, you in previous episodes asked me questions. So here we are, we're playing a two player game. I reveal a card from the encounter deck. I do all its things. And then I reveal a second card from the encounter deck, do all its things. At that moment, the encounter deck is empty, but I've revealed all the cards that I need to reveal. What do I do? Do I shuffle the encounter deck or do I leave it? If you do not have to draw another card from the encounter deck during the quest phase, you will leave it. Right. It's basically, it, the rule is if you are in the quest phase and you are needing to draw to reveal another card you will be reshuffling the deck to to meet that requirement um but any other time if like during the planning phase during combat if you happen to run out of cards for whatever reason you don't shuffle that until the be you would you would wait until you have to reveal cards during the following quest phase and so that's that's always interesting because there's some cards, like Ted said, that that trigger off of, you know, looking into the encounter deck. And if there's no encounter deck, you don't have to worry about it, you know, like things like that. So um so as we're talking about revealing encounter cards, maybe, you know, we we never talked about some of the uh keywords that happen, namely on encounter cards. And so, Ted, I reveal an encounter card. It's usually a treachery, but it can be other things. There's locations and enemies that have the doomed keyword. What is the doomed keyword, Ted? Uh, so doomed, it could be a value of usually it's going to be one or more. It's going to be bold. And if an encounter card with the doomed keyword is revealed, each player must increase his or her threat by the specified value. So it's not just the player physically flipping over the cards, Doom decks. So if it's Doomed 2, for example, and there's a two-player game, like both players raise their threat by two. Mm -hmm. And that is also not canceled by Test of Will. Test of Will only cancels the when revealed effects and not any other effects like Doomed. And the next keyword, Surge. So Ted, what's a Surge keyword? Yeah, surge. Another uh, a lot of players hate this keyword. Uh, surge. <laughs> Every if player hates card, this keyword. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if an encounter card with the surge keyword is revealed, you reveal one additional card from the encounter deck after resolving that card's when revealed effects, uh, if, if there is any. So if you have a treachery card that says surge when revealed, the order is you resolve the when revealed text first. Then you discard that card after resolving that text, and then you draw a second or follow-up encounter card. Okay. More encounter cards are bad. <laughs> right. So no one likes Surge, because it's just free cards from the encounter deck. Right. And it's, I mean, functionally, it's the way that encounter the encounter deck can catch up or keep up with players. You know, so that's why I don't have a problem with it to be in the game. Like, it's not like a broken mechanic. It's, you know, it's just, it has to be in the game for the encounter deck to make up. But just because I understand why it's in the game, that doesn't mean that I don't hate it when it pops up because it's just stinks all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And. There's also cards like the Hill Troll 
that have a victory point or say victory on them. So Ted, what's that? Yeah, so if you have a card that has a, a victory value of it's going to be one or more again, uh, victory cards are used to calculate the score of the game, which we didn't cover because it's a, an optional uh, thing you can do. Not many people important... keep track of score. So you yeah. know, typically you uh, win or lose is usually the score that people deal with. So Yeah, but there is a very functional mechanic to victory where if uh, an enemy... Uh, or location with victory is explored or the enemy is destroyed. Usually those cards are discarded, but if it's a victory card, it goes to the it's what's called the victory display. And that's a separate game pile. So it's not it's sort of removed from the game in the essence that it's not in the discard pile. So if you defeat that hill troll with victory and it goes to the victory display, you will not see that copy of the hill troll again in the game because it's it's you're not putting it in the discard pile pile it's not going to reshuffle into the deck it's victory cards tend to be uh bigger cards that are stronger or have more effects mm -hmm. and uh, are sometimes unique um, so that thematically you don't have to run into them again things like that. yeah yeah, yeah. and it, defeating them represents overcoming like a, a big task and you sort of don't have to deal with that again or like you, david said like thematically you if you explored a particular mountain Right. top or something like you don't you don't go there again there's only one of it so it makes sense that once you go there one time right yeah okay yep and then the last keyword that you'll see namely in the third scenario of the core set is the guarded keyword um there are three guarded objectives there the the shadow key and gandalf's map and then the third one that i forget the torch no. Uh, yeah, torch, map, and key. Yep. Okay, yep. And so on it, it says guarded. And Ted, what's the guard? You love the guarded keyword, so what is that all about? I love it so much. <laughs> so after an objective with the guarded keyword is revealed and placed in the staging area, or if you're instructed to place it like that quest says, uh, you reveal the next card from the encounter deck and you attach it to the objective. And you cannot claim the objective card itself like one of the, the map or the key until you have discarded the card guarding it that's attached to it the encounter card so if it's a location you have to travel there and then explore it if it's an enemy you're going to have to gauge it or, or kill it in some fashion now there are tricks to doing both those things to exploring locations in the staging area via northern tracker and you can attack enemies in the staging area with uh, with Dune here. So there's tips and tricks, but you have to deal with that encounter card to free up the guarded card. Yeah, and so, I mean, that's... Later on in the game cycle, there are encounter player cards, and or sorry, guarded player cards, and there's doomed player cards and things like that, but... You know, those are those are later on down the line. If maybe if you come across some of those some other place, and you're wondering, like these keywords usually stay authentic to what they mean, regardless if they are a player card or an encounter card. So there's player cards with that that go into the victory display. There are player cards that are guarded. There are player cards that are doomed. But for this core set, usually you're dealing with those um, those cards in the encounter deck and life is good well ted as we sit here and wrap up this six part series on the phases of the game five part series six part series like five, five. Yeah. We find seven phases of the game and we we combine two phases on two episodes yeah so any any last gasps for new players in terms of the game in terms of phases Dis of the game just uh follow the rule book read the cards we've emphasized that a lot in this series but at the very end of the day it's a game that's meant to be fun so if you messed up some rule um whatever did, right. did you have fun and right. if you did then great that's all the product is supposed to do yeah so just enjoy it 
<laughs> I totally agree with that. And, you know, like, um, as we wrap this up here, I'll say that I'll, I'll double down on what Ted said about the fun of the game. You know, if you play it right, that's great. If you play it incorrectly, but you still had fun, I wouldn't beat yourself up beat yourself up over it. You know, there's the veteran players are still making mistakes, you know, on the game in, you know, in, in some ways, um, you know, and, and it, there's a learning curve to it, but in general, because it's a cooperative game, the, the point is to get together with your friends, have fun in Tolkien's universe and just explore around and see what there is. And in general, you'll, you'll have fun, Playing the game, if you if even if you misplay a few things, you know, then and and that's cool. Um, and keep in mind, I've said it and hammered it home. I hope is that this game is a game of incremental progress. Is you know, like you're you're you know, you're lucky to to make you know make positive impact every turn. You know, if you can if you can explore location and put progress on the main quest and, you know, do those things every turn, you know, even if you're not doing it wildly, you know, that's what this game is about. You know, you can have a game last eight or 10 or 12 rounds pretty, pretty straightforwardly, you know, and are, are pretty easily. And, and that's the fun of it is that, you know, you play it, you're playing it for a little while to get immersed in it whether you're playing it right or wrong, you know, uh, and then, you know, whether you miss a rule, miss a trigger, you know, it's just incremental progress and, and it allows you to kind of live in Tolkien's universe. And that's what I really appreciate about the game. So, yeah, I think it's yeah. Mary. It's, uh, uh, it's a great community to be a part of. There's plenty of other resources and, uh, the, uh, uh, David, Grant, and myself, we just want to contribute to that and keep up the, the camaraderie and uh, keep the game going as much as we can. To And we welcome all new players to the game and we look forward to saving Middle Earth with you. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. So, well, there you have it. That's our series here. New Player February will continue with some more episodes, but uh, yeah, this con this concludes our series on the phases of the game, and you know, everybody, you should join us again as New Player February continues next time. Have a great day, everybody. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons, and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash cardtalk2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk, L-O-T-R-L-C-G on YouTube and there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.